All right, so here we are back again. So you may remember what the mixture in here looks like. Uh, here's a flashback. The plan for today is to boil off all the ethylene glycol and we'll, then we'll be left with pure ethylene glycol and the distillate, which I can reuse later down the track for anything else. Um, and then we're left with a little bit of excess sodium hydroxide and a lot of sodium, um, hold on, let me get this right, sodium terephthalate. Sodium terephthalate. Sodium terephthalate. Anyway, you know what the compound is. It'll be in there. Um, and then we add some more sodium hydroxide. Um, we heat it up to the sodium hydroxide melts. It'll start to decarboxylate the um, sodium terephthalate. Now, the the big issue, the big sort of variable that I have about today is that the ethylene glycol will distill over at 198 to 200 degrees or so. Um, sodium hydroxide melts at about 220 degrees. Um, now we obviously don't want any benzene in our ethylene glycol, we don't want any ethylene glycol in our benzene. Um, so hitting that, we've only got 20 degrees. Um, it really should be separate events. I can't really see the ethylene, um, the sodium hydroxide melting while there's still ethylene glycol in there, but um, but that might happen. So we might end up with some benzene in our ethylene glycol, which will suck. Um, I can wash it out, redistill it, everything, and blah blah blah. But we end up with loss of yields, and it'll be a lot more messier. Distillation was just about to start. There was some condensation in the head there. Um, we we're just about to get the stuff over, so I increased the heat a little bit. Um, and the stuff wasn't coming over, so I thought that maybe it wasn't boiling properly in the flask or something like that. So I left it for quite a while, nothing was coming over. Turns out, my hot plate just decided to not heat anymore. And, um, it's now not heating at all. Anyway, I'll probably make a separate video ranting about this, but, um, uh, this really sucks because I can't heat the stuff. I can probably use the gas stove, um... <laughs> But it's pissing with the rain, so I can only do that outside, so we'll have to leave this all for another day. Um, it's been going for about 30 seconds, and now you can already hear it sort of starting to boil at the bottom there. So this is a lot more aggressive way of heating it. We're still obviously going to try and hit that uh, 20 degree sort of window between the boiling point of ethylene glycol and the melting point of sodium hydroxide. Um, which should still happen, because it should still boil off the ethylene glycol before it melts the sodium hydroxide. But with this aggressive way of heating, it'll be even harder to get that separation going, especially seeing as we'll probably heat this metal can up to, you know, 300 degrees as we're boiling off the ethylene glycol. Um, and then as soon as it finishes distilling off, the sodium hydroxide will melt with the residual heat. Um, so it's a bit of an issue, but um, we'll see how it goes. So it's sort of started to distill over now, but to say it was uh, playing nicely would be a dramatic understatement. <laughs> so yeah, bumping pretty badly. Alright, this is starting to be horrific. It's bumping so violently, it's actually sort of forcing that lid off. Um, and at any moment, it can sort of fall off and do things. And the, and the stuff isn't really just laying over. But um, we're going to have to stop this because this is, this is not going anywhere. I'm also going to run out of gas. But um, yeah, we're going to have to approach this a different way because this seal isn't really holding because there's just too much... Uh, it's just aggressively boiling at the bottom but um, and aggressively bumping. But uh, um, Oh, no, we've gone all the way up to 100 now. But, um, yeah, this is really unpleasant. So I don't think we're going to make it to 200 degrees. Um, yeah. Um, I might have calmed off a little bit now, but, um, <laughs> there we go. All right, no, I've got to stop this. This is, um, the, the seal isn't holding either, so, um, we've got to approach this a different way. This is no good. All right, seeing as we're struggling to distill the ethylene glycol directly out of the mix, what we're going to do is instead just filter out the um, sodium terephthalate in there um, and then, yeah, deal with it all separately. Now, you may have asked, why didn't I just do this originally? Why didn't I just separate the two, the ethylene glycol from the sodium terephthalate originally? Um, well, we, if you remember, we had an excess of sodium hydroxide during the, the hydrolysis reaction. And we're going to be adding sodium hydroxide to the mixture later on. So I guess I thought it was advantageous to keep that excess of sodium hydroxide, that leftover sodium hydroxide. If we carry that through, it'll be useful because we don't have to add so much sodium hydroxide later on. Um, but really, in reality, it comes down when it comes down to it, it's about oh, 10, 10 or 15 grams of sodium hydroxide. So it's really not that much. Um, that really cost me nothing. Okay, I filtered off the majority of the sodium terephthalate. Um, that's all the ethylene glycol down there. And all the excess sodium hydroxide um, is 
seemingly dissolved in the ethylene glycol, so it's all been removed. So, um, it's obviously it's a very thick mixture and takes a very long time to filter. And there's only a little bit of ethylene glycol left. So what I'm going to do is I'm just now that there's no remaining sodium hydroxide in there because it's all been basically washed out. I'm just going to heat this up um, just to boil off all the ethylene glycol and leave us with the dry sodium to rare phthalate. Drying it like this is a terrible idea. It's just splattered everywhere. It's, just, it's not like it's just bumping uncontrollably. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It smells pretty awful, but not as bad as it did when it was like refluxing without the condenser. So um, I assume most of the smell's gone with the ethylene glycol, and it's sort of calming down now. Not really, but calm enough that it stopped raining. Um, hot sodium terephthalate around here um, which is a nice change because it really wasn't that pleasant. Alright so here's our dried sodium terephthalate obviously you can see that I charred it quite substantially on the bottom there which um, will likely affect the yield at the end probably not by much but um, probably by a measure on amount. Um, to be honest the way I did it where I, I basically decanted off most of the um, uh, ethylene glycol and then just heated it to, to drive off the rest of it was a shit way of doing this. I don't know why I thought of doing it that way. I really should have just put it in the filter paper, got all the ethylene glycol out like I did, but then just washed it with a more volatile solvent like ethanol or even like toluene. So I didn't have to heat it up to bloody 200 degrees to dry it. Um, I don't know why I did that. Um, but, you know, next we'll know for next time to not do that and um, just do it the conventional way, which you just wash it with the volatile solvent and then let it dry. Um, but anyway, this hopefully will still work, so we do have our dried sodium terephthalate. Okay, so I've ground up our sodium terephthalate, so it's, uh, it's brown now. Um, but hopefully all those important benzene rings are still intact. Um, annoyingly, because I left some sodium hydroxide in there because I didn't filter it properly and wash it like I should have and like you should have should do if you're doing this project, because um, I just tried to do a shortcut um, it left some sodium hydroxide in there, um, so this brown powder is hydrosco hygroscopic, which is very annoying because I went to grind it the other day, I thought it was dry, um, and it was all just lumped together, and just this, this brown clay. Um, so I had to re-dry it and then grind it, and it's already sort of pulling moisture from the air, which i got to admit, on a day like today, is pretty easy to do, seeing as it's, you know, the lab flooded, the place is flooded, and it's currently raining, and it will continue to rain for a few days, so... Let's have a look at the equation for what we're doing today because it's always good to actually understand what we're doing, not just mixing chemicals. So we made here, this is our sodium terephthalate. phthalate. Um, I'm going to mix it with two equivalents of sodium hydroxide. Well, actually technically we're going to use four, which I think is going to be massively excessive, but um, stoichiometrically it's two. And what happens is those base um, decarboxylate, which is ripping off this group here, which is you can consider as CO2. It actually goes into carbonate. Um, I think maybe the CO2 might leave as a gas, and if that ca you know if that's the case, it'll just fuck off through the condenser and out the end. But um, for the equation to work, yeah, it it goes into um, sodium carbonate there, and then um, we make our benzene. Obviously, there's hydrogens all the way around, but we've just added those two because you can see that the hydrogens are replacing those um, carboxylate groups. Now, this is usually done with sodium benzoate, which is the same as this, but it's only got one carboxylate group. Um, and that's because sodium benzoate is, is quite easily available. Here it is. It's quite a, um, a cheap chemical. It's non-toxic. It's actually a food additive. Um, so it's really easy to ship and buy. And um, so you can buy it in bulk pretty cheaply. Um, it's also got the advantage, um, sodium benzoate has the advantage of, seeing there's only one carboxylate group, um, the ratio of sort of benzene to reaction mix is a lot higher. If you crunch the numbers, this is all... Um, basically stoichiometric with a slight excess of sodium hydroxide from um, so 100 grams of reaction mix with sodium benzoate you get 42 grams of benzene stoichiometrically um, 100 grams of reaction mix with a sodium terephthalate you only get 26 grams of benzene stoichiometrically um, so yeah it's a lot better using sodium benzoate but yep we're doing it from plastic so we'll, we'll continue on all right, here is 47 grams of sodium hydroxide, which we will add to our 55 grams of sodium terephthalate, um, which is in there keeping dry. Um, it's a horrible brown chalky powder. I don't know where I went so wrong. 
it used to be nice, but anyway, um, we're not going to crush up the sodium hydroxide because uh, it's it's because it's slightly wet, so it'd be very annoying to grind. Um, and I'm hoping it all just melts anyway, so um, as long as the sodium terephthalate is fine, we can just coat around the outsides of those prills. Yep, that's what it's doing. And um, then as the sodium hydroxide melts, it'll have great contact with the um, terephthalate to do the decarboxylation. All right, the dry powder is loaded in there. Uh, the condenser's running. I'm pretty sure I sealed this well enough. Um, yeah, so I guess we just got to turn the heat on and hope it all doesn't uh, burst into flames. We are basically distilling off, you know, a petrol-like product from uh, something at 200 degrees. So um, we really do hope this joint uh, seal holds and the cat doesn't jump up on the table. All this smoke is just pouring out the end here. So nothing's really condensing. Uh, the temperature is about 40 degrees, so I don't know what it is. It smells terrible. But... Mm, it's also leaking out that joint, so I'll just stop this for the moment. So I got sick of using this bloody PFDE tape, uh, and I think I've run out anyway. So it's probably the worst idea I've ever had, but I used to use some electrical tape to use it. It'll probably melt, but um, if it melts, it's not a big deal, right? Maybe. And this shouldn't get too hot anyway, because this is. Um, you know, coming over at 80 degrees, right, maybe, sort of, probably not, um, but, you know, we'll try it, nothing that bad can happen, right, sure, maybe. So this reaction is working, I'm getting drops of a yellow liquid that I was exactly what I expected the benzene to look like um, from pictures of other people doing this, both the, uh, the sodium benzoate and the um, terephthalic acid method. This is yellow sort of benzene, which we will obviously redistill to get rid of all the yellow. But um, I think it's possibly the worst yields of all time this might be. This is the fastest rate it has been going all day. Um, it's finally stopped just pumping out this white smoke as it was. Um, there's a lot of white smoke going around, but that's just because this tape has melted, because that was the worst idea of all time. <laughs> to put that electrical tape on there. I mean, to be fair, it has sealed the joint because it's melted all into the joint and it's fine, but it's just smoking like crazy and it smells like absolute crap. All right, I'm really trying to get the last remaining bits out, but uh, it's really not distilling over anymore, which is a bit of a shame because there's really not a whole lot there. I mean, as it's sort of expected, I mean, if we've got 100% yield, there's not a whole lot, but I don't know, I think it's very much um, in terms of yield. So I'm going to give up. What's the temperature at? About 150. Um, Obviously that's way above the benzene boiling point, but um, yeah, we're gonna have to turn all the heat off here. Well, the news gets even worse, to be honest, because uh, that volume of liquid was actually mostly, well, about half water. Um, I mean, it, it's gone away, because we actually, we have formed benzene. This is the top there. Um, it smells like petrol. Um, it's floating on top of the water. Um, these are all very good signs. However, it is shit all. I think I've probably said that about eight times so far, but, um, yeah, uh, it's actually such a small amount, it's going to be difficult to uh, read the steel for me because I have such big joint sizes and we've got nothing smaller. But um, we'll take off this water and uh, just see how much orange stuff we have. So measuring the pH of the water under the benzene there, you can see that it is very basic. Um, it's it's the green on the filter paper there, um, which isn't completely unexpected. Um, so I assume that white smoke coming over there was some sort of um, base of some sort. But um, it's not unreacted um, terephthalic acid that's subliming off, is what I'm trying to say. I mean, that would be insoluble anyway, but um, yeah, it's very basic. All right, just added some salt water and did the whole shake and vent thing. I know we're redistilling it, but I just wanted to see if I could wash out that orange color at all, but I can't. Um, and the salt water will help drag away any um, water that's left in the benzene. All right, so how much orange liquid do we have? It is 2.25 grams, which is roughly two and a half mils. Or, if we assume that this is 100% pure, um, based on how much sodium terephthalate we had in that container, it's roughly 15%. Yeah. So, um, assuming, because all this orange stuff is going to be left behind when we still have the benzene, we're probably only going to get 5 or 10% yield based on sodium terephthalate. Um, which is dreadful. So the question is, where did all those carbons go? Oh, here's just a sad note. I was taking the, uh, the joint out of the metal container and uh, then I dropped it and it shattered. So I think I can finally throw away this uh, 
flask neck now. Maybe I could turn it into boiling chips. No, I can't. No, I'll, I'll, I'll finally let it die now. <laughs> Here is all our carbon. Uh, get the light right. Char. Organic char. Carbon. Um, it smells terrible. Um, and, um, yeah, so I feel like I shouldn't really have all this char, which implies that maybe I was heating it too hot, um, which I can blame on not having a hot plate. So thanks, Westlab. But, um, yeah, that's a bit of a shame. I thought maybe I, I, I just sort of torch it as, as hard as I could. No, no, I didn't do it as hard as I could. I did do it as hard as I could by the end of it, just to see if I could drive any more off. But, um, yeah, it's a shame that, that all of it's sort of just charred up, as opposed to coming over nicely. I'll see if I can knock this out and see if it's all black. So yes, it is charred basically all the way through. There's some lighter patches, but... Because my first thought when I saw the really slow rate of benzene coming over, um, I thought that it wasn't getting enough heat transfer, like I was just decarboxylating the bits around the edges and down the bottom, and there was going to be a big mass in the center that wasn't melted. But by the looks of it, this has, that hasn't happened. Um, it's all charred as heck. Um, but at least I get to reuse this container. Now I've been so doom and gloom about this that I forgot to mention that we actually have achieved our goal. We have made benzene here, a very hard to obtain carcinogen from the most, you know, available material, <laughs> um, PET plastic. So we have, like, I'm getting all shitty about my yields, but, but the reaction has actually worked. Like, we have done it, you know. We've turned a non, basically a non-chemical item into a, a, a useful solvent. Um, so I'm patting myself on the back here, but I'm just pointing out that um, before everyone, like, roasts me for my yields, um, <laughs> this method does actually work, and, and we, have, we have actually achieved our goal of this project. Um, but from now, it's just about purification so that we actually get usable products out of this so that I can actually do chemistry with the benzene. All right, that's probably enough for one video. So what are we left with? We have a dyed ethylene glycol that's got water in it. That's got a large amount of sodium hydroxide in it. Um, we have a small amount of benzene, so small that we probably can't even distill it over without the mechanical losses taking over to a such a large percentage. So what do we do now? Well, I've still got this container. Um, I, I figure I might as well um, try the sodium benzoate decarboxylation and then I can add the orange stuff because this produces orange impure benzene as well add it to this and then distill it over and then get a reasonable amount of benzene because this um, it's 100 grams I probably won't use all of it but then I'll get you know a decent amount like we're talking you know at least 10 mils or so you know it's something I can actually see um, so and also I can I can do that now um, instead of cleaning up the glassware I can just reuse the glassware as is because it's using the same stuff because yeah, I might have to clean all the tape off this fucking glass, but that tape was a shit idea. Look at it, it's all, like, this tape just melted onto the... I mean, it worked, it did work, so I mean, how shit is idea if it works, but fuck, it smelled terrible, and it was going to catch fire or clog stuff, and... So yeah, this is all just covered in that orange solid, whatever it is, it's all solidified. Thanks for watching this video. Um, I'll see you next time. <laughs> um, hopefully we get some uh, decent yields out of this. But uh, knowing my luck lately, we won't get any yields.